Hi, and welcome to Matt Holman Talks Mental Health, the podcast where I have the opportunity to sit down and chat to amazing humans about their journeys and their stories with mental health. For this episode, I'm so excited and happy to introduce Priya to the conversation. Welcome, Priya. Thank you. Lovely to see you. So, as always, just very briefly, I'm going to introduce you and how we got to this conversation. I'll let you do a proper introduction, let people know a little bit about you, what you do, and then we'll get into the big conversation, big topic of mental health. Um, yes. so we are here today because Priya and I have been chatting for a little while, probably over the course of the last couple of years, actually, we've been in connection, you know, so um, talking about mental health, um, there are some programs and plans in place. We are going to be doing a little bit more work together as well moving forward, which is fantastic. So excited. Um, but Priya has a wonderful story as well, um, and it's going to be shared on this podcast which is amazing so thank you so much Priya firstly for agreeing to come and join me on this um introduce yourself tell people a little bit about yourself and what you do okay so I'm Priya um, I work in registry affairs for a company called Alcon um, I also work on the health and well-being side so I'm the health and well-being champion um, for Alcon and I do quite a bit of work around mental health and talking about mental health and how it's important to kind of realize people suffer and people need to talk about it and it needs to become the normal and take the stigma around it, stigma away from it. So um, yeah, that's mainly what I do. That's pretty much what you're doing. And maybe that links in nicely to what we do and what we're going to do together. So working on those programs together, which would be great. So I just can't wait. But you've got a story and I want to hear your story as everybody does. So please tell us a little bit about your journey with mental health. You define it, you talk about what you're willing to share and please, you know, just, just let us know more about who you are and, and what you've, you've been going through or what's happened to you in your life. Okay, so if I'll be honest with you, I didn't actually know about mental health and things until probably about four years ago. So I actually ended up going into a bit of depression um, and I didn't actually know what was going on. I think what happened was I started getting these thoughts in my head about you know you're not good enough you're not um you don't have a purpose in this world why were you born kind of thing or things like that and they just started to spiral and got worse and worse on a, on a daily basis and I used to wake up in the morning I just felt like I had a um dark cloud over my head and it just didn't seem to be going away and I, it got to a point where my manager at work actually picked up on it and he was like are you okay and I was like yeah I'm fine and he's like you've kind of kind of withdrawn a little bit and he goes I've seen a little bit of a change in you over the last couple of weeks months so I was like right and funny enough I hadn't picked up on this but he had and um, I think as time went on it got worse and worse and I did start to kind of distance from people and I started that's when I started realizing okay something's not quite right here I didn't actually know what, what it was at the time I didn't realize depression mental health or anything else I, I just don't feel myself anymore um and I think that's when I went to see um a doctor um and they annoyingly sometimes doctors do kind of jump to okay you need to go on antidepressants I was like no whoa 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 I was like no I don't want to be and ultimately, I think I'm going to be stuck on these for the rest of my life. And I was like, no, I, I don't want to go down the route. So kind of pushed that to one side. And then I got to a point one day where I opened up an email and I could not read the email. I couldn't understand the email. It's something I do on a day to day basis. And it was a simple inquiry I've done 40 times before. And I was like, why can I not do this? Uh, why can I not understand this? And I had to have a I had to have a um, meeting with my manager and I had to tell him, look, I'm really struggling. Like. I guess my work had kind of started to probably take a little bit of a dive, but not to the point like it was massively, I had, didn't have to go into a PCP or anything like that. It was just, my mind just, just kept saying, are you sure you're okay? Do you need any support from me? And I'm like, no, no, I'm fine. Um, but yeah, so I, I sat down and had a meeting with him. I was like, look, I'm really struggling. And he was just like, I felt sorry for him because it's something he had never been through. And it was something he couldn't really empathize or understand. But to be fair to him, honestly, hats off to him. He supported me so much through my journey. Um, and he was like, okay, so have you spoken to your doctor? I was like, yes, I went to my doctor, but they tried to refer me, you know, give me medicine. I didn't want that. He goes, okay, have you thought about like our private um, healthcare? They do therapy. And I was like, oh, right. Okay. I didn't really know that. And I was like, my first thing was like, I don't want to get help. Like I'm not, I'm, there's nothing wrong with me kind of thing. Um, but he was like, he goes, Priya, I really think you should like at least look into it. So firstly, I tried the employee assistance program and I talked to someone and I was really anxious talking to them and I felt like I was doing a tick box exercise. I felt like I was doing it because I got told to do it. Um, and then they, they rang me up and they called me back to do a follow up. And I was just like, I, I really didn't want to pick up their phone and talk to them. I was like, this is really weird. Like, why is like, 
I don't know, it felt intrusive. Um, I can't really explain what I went through, but I just remember being so anxious going through this. And then I finally went through to private healthcare because I was like, maybe it is the right thing for me. Um, and I went and saw a therapist and they was probably the best thing I ever did. I actually have used this therapist through the last few years and this got me through a lot. Um, but it did make a massive difference talking. It was to an unbiased person, someone obviously who didn't really, it was not a part of my life, didn't obviously wasn't going to go anywhere else. It was confidential. So yeah, just being able to talk to someone on a weekly basis, slowly, slowly alleviated the issues I was having. And it made me feel a little bit better. I still carried on working through this. I didn't get signed up or anything. Um, and then slowly, slowly, I just started getting better. I started doing things like a gratitude journal. Um, my friend actually bought me a gratitude journal. So I did open up to a few people about this. And I think that was one of another important things, having a support system, having people that cared. Because another one of the things, the negative thoughts in my head was no one cares about you. You were on your own. Because a lot of people had left me in my life at that point. That's one of the things that caused me to kind of go into a depression. You kind of blame yourself. What did I do? What's wrong with me? Kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I started doing gratitude journals. I, I got in, back into football, something I really, really enjoyed, and bought, which I didn't realize brought me a lot of joy. And through doing these things, doing being grateful every single day, even if it was for my hands or that was ability to walk. Um, one of my friends I used to work with used to make, uh, play, make me play the glad game. So every single morning when we used to get coffee, she even used to say name three things you're grateful for. And I was like, there's not. Well, those days I was just like nothing. She goes, no. She goes, your legs don't you? She's got a nice car outside, don't you? You're grateful. Name me three things. So she used to force it out of me. And every single day, without fail, I had to do it with her. And that slowly, slowly brought the negative thoughts away. Um, so, yeah, that was my first journey. And that's when I started realizing how important it is to talk about mental health, how much it does impact your daily life, be at home, be at work. Um, and that's when I started up. Um, we went into COVID, actually. And I started up this um, MS Teams called uh, Health and Wellbeing. Um, and I just started talking about my story. I um, just opened up about it. Um, so other people knew that they weren't alone. I think one thing for me I wish I had at the time when I went through it is people said this light at the end of the tunnel. Because when you're going through it, you do not see light at the end of the tunnel. I thought I was going to go through it forever. Um, and yeah, it was just... Yeah, the worst feeling in the world. I, I I don't wish it upon anyone, but on the on it spinning on its head. If I hadn't got through it, I wouldn't be the person I am today. I wouldn't have the strength I have today. Um, so yeah, that was my first journey. Um, so two and a half years ago, I went back into a depression, and this was like a hundred times worse. Like my my therapist had warned me. They said you can have a bit of a fall. So once you come out of it, don't think you'll never go back into it. But I was like, oh, whatever. I'm out of it now. I'll be fine. You know, I can't remember what happened two and a half years ago, but it, again, it just must have tipped me over the edge. Um, and I actually had was going on a six week. Um, trip to Australia and New Zealand so I actually went with my depression to this journey I was so anxious I remember and I'm, I can't believe I'm saying this but I remember rocking on the sofa back and forth saying I don't want to go I don't want to go because it was forest fires there was, a, there was so much happening but when you're in depression you think the worst of the worst is going to happen um so just I remember thinking I don't want to go mom's like you don't have to go like it's fine cancer if you don't go and I was like I was like no but I have to it's like I had to prove something to myself I was like, and I pushed through it. And I, when I went, I'm not going to lie, I went there and I had a few breakdowns. I went with a friend who was thankfully so understanding because there's a few times I had panic attacks when I was there. And I was just like, I can't breathe. I, I don't know what's happening. I'm, I'm just getting really anxious. Um, and I just, I couldn't breathe. I didn't know why I was getting anxious. I couldn't explain it. And she just made me take deep breaths. She's like, calm down, nothing's going to happen. You're okay, I'm here. And I think that's what we need to hear sometimes to just calm you down. You just need to hear someone's there. Um, so, yeah. I yeah so I went through that depression but it's funny because I think if I wasn't going through what I was going through it was half the things I wouldn't have done like it's weird to say but when you're in depression you don't care about anything happening to you it's like fear is no longer there it's it's weird you have the fear in regards to what people think about you and all the negative thoughts but in regards to doing things like bungee jumping things like you're like yeah just like, I don't really care what happens if I could die I die kind of thing um, yeah it was literally because I said to myself I would never bungee jump. I hate, like, I would, I'll skydive. I, I'm a genuine junkie. Like, I, I'll go scuba diving, things like that. 
but I was like budget in no way so we went to New Zealand and uh, we were about to skydive but some for some reason they had to cancel it and I was like I haven't come all this way and I can't do anything it's like I'll do a bungee jump for a skydive so that's like, fine it'll have to be a bungee jump my friend's like you're insane she's like no I'm not doing it I was like that's fine I'll, I'm gonna do it if you don't want to do it don't do it um, but yes, yeah, so we drove somewhere and literally I got to the end of the bungee and I was like, this is insane, how am I doing this? But I just dropped myself and I went, biggest adrenaline jet rush I've ever had in my life, honestly. It was probably one of the most fantastic things I've ever done. So that's what I mean. Through the depression I went through, I actually had fantastic experiences on the other side. Now looking back at it, like I said, then I felt like I was just going through the motions. And I, didn't, and I was just doing it because I didn't really care what happened to me. But now thinking back, if I didn't have that fear, that if the fear wasn't there, I wouldn't have done those things. So, yeah, it was insane. Um, but so I came back after my six week um, travel around Australia and New Zealand and I came back to work. And my boss had obviously seen me go through my depression the first time and I had just kind of come out of it and then I kind of sunk back into it just before I went. And I, I don't think he saw me going back into it until I came back he was like I thought you going away was going to like alleviate your depression and like cure you kind of thing um and yeah fair enough because that was like for him he was like I've given you like a holiday six weeks kind of thing because he really did like help me have six weeks you can't just take that away really but I had to save up my uh weeks or my holiday towards the end of the um year so yeah he was brilliant in supporting me with all this because like I said anything I wanted he if he knew it was going to benefit me in some way he would make it happen um so yeah I came back and I was an absolute wreck he was just like what's the matter you just had a six-week holiday how are you still not okay and he, he, in his head he couldn't really kind of understand like you've literally just had an opportunity of a lifetime how are you still you know going through this and I was like look I don't know but this isn't I'm not okay like I'm worse than I was before I can feel these emotions taking over and I don't I again I'm getting to a point where I can't read emails I can't function I can't even speak to people like I get anyone approaches me you've met me before Matt I love talking to people I love making connections anytime someone approached me I was like please don't talk to me please don't talk to me please don't ask me how I am yeah. I literally just wanted to get to work put my head down do my work and go home I didn't want to talk to anyone I didn't want to you know have any conversation with anyone I didn't want to make any connections with anyone just wanted to do my work and go home um and yeah like I said that went on and I had to actually this time get signed off from work because it was getting to the point where I just couldn't come into work and I just felt like I was going to cry every time I was coming to work and I didn't understand why it wasn't because I hate my job I love my company I love my team I love my manager um but I just I was just like I can't so I got signed up from work for a month and um at first, it felt like the worst thing I could possibly do because I felt like my purpose had been taken away. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with my time now? At least before I had a purpose, I was working. I was, you know, I had a job. Well, I still had a job, but you know what I mean? It didn't feel like I had a job because I wasn't doing anything. And I honestly got to a point in that month where I was off where I actually felt like taking my life because the negative thoughts got so bad where I was just like, I felt like I was going to be stuck like this forever. I just generally thought this was going to be my life forever. I had forgotten I had come out of it before. All of that had gone away. Um, I had forgotten everything I'd gone through in the past and how I'd come out of it on the other side. It was just like, this is going to keep happening to me because it's happening once. I'm going to keep, I might come out of it again, but it's going to keep happening to me for the rest of my life. And I, I did, I had, I, like I said, I kind of thought about taking my life and things like that. And the only thing that probably kept me going is, again, my support system, my parents, my family, my friends. They kept, they believed in me when I couldn't kind of thing. And they're like, you've got so much to give. You've got so much love to give. Look at all the stuff you've done with health and well-being and things. I was like, yeah, that's nothing. Anyone can do that kind of thing. And I, I kept downplaying it. Every time someone tried to give me a positive feedback, I just either pushed it down or I made it a negative one. Um, and that's the thing with depression like there you can see no good no happiness no positive emotions everything is just negative in your life and like I said all I can the analogy you can give is like is a dark cloud that follows you around everywhere you go so yeah now I'm at the other side like I said again I kind of had to take time off I had to do the grateful thing so the grateful thing, I think, is one of the most important things because they say, and there's, there's obviously scientific studies about if you do this for about, I think, 90 days or 45 days, you rewire your brain to think positively um, because apparently we naturally kind of 
do that you need to because of the fight and flight, basically, um, due to evolution and things like that. So that's why our brain automatically goes to thinking negatively. Um, but if you can rewire it and basically train your brain in a way to kind of think about the positive things in your life, be it how big or small that they are, um, you slowly, slowly start pushing away those negative thoughts and basically you're seeing positive things, everything in a positive way. Um, now, that's not to say like if you're feeling crap or not great, you should kind of think, OK, what, what positive can I find in this? You, you are allowed to feel your emotion, but next day think, OK, tomorrow is a new day kind of thing. And hopefully that will make you feel better tomorrow and look for the good, beautiful things in that day. Let yourself feel, like I say, way crap for maybe a day, not two, because then you end up going into a spiral or you go down a dark tunnel. Um, but yeah, so yeah, three things I would say is basically always have hope, um, always be grateful, and always make sure you have a support system around you. Brilliant. Yeah, well, totally agree with all of those. <laughs> Biggest pillar, isn't it? Is that, you know, yeah. No, I think the gratitude, I have to say, I'm really grateful. Thank you so much for sharing your story, your journey like this, you know, because I think it's very insightful for others to understand that. That's what these conversations are about, really. You know, it's recognizing that people go through experiences in their lives and yet we don't often talk about them or we don't share those thoughts and feelings. And, and look at you now, you're you're doing an amazing job and you're, you, you know, you're vibrant and you're positive. And I love that. And I, I always love our conversations because I just... Yeah. I always walk away from them and I know I'm going to be happier because of the conversation, if that makes that's sense. Right, so, so I think that's what we all have to remind ourselves is, you know, we can have conversations that are very difficult, but yeah. we can also energize each other through those conversations because yeah. they're learning. Now we're learning how to take on, you know, take on the understanding of other people's struggles at times. So thank you very much for, for sharing that. I really mean it. Um, but I do want to ask you some questions. Yeah, of course. I more. I want to dive deeper. So <laughs> Obviously, two and a half years ago was when you went into this sort of, you know, what I think we can say is quite a serious belt of depression there. Yes. Suicidal thoughts. <clears throat> was that alongside COVID? So in terms of sort of, you know, there was changes going on. Was that before or whereabouts did that sort of fit in? Before COVID. So weirdly enough, COVID actually probably helped me a little bit because it took me away from having to answer people and pretend I was OK, because sometimes you don't want people to know that you're not OK and people to keep kind of asking you um so yeah it was before covid hit so i i had been signed up in february and i was supposed to go back to work in march and that's when covid hit so i never actually went back to the office for a while um so yeah weirdly enough like i said covid is probably just what i needed to kind of recover and get back to um being normal within my own time because i still connected with people so obviously you live with my parents and i had them all the time and then i had ms teams meetings so i connected with people through that but I didn't have to on a from nine o'clock till five o'clock pretend and be happy and put on this mask because I'm not good at that. I don't have a poker face. My my manager always says to me, "You wear your heart on your sleeve." He goes, "I love that, mate," because I always know how you're feeling. Um, but yeah, that's just how I am. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah, I know. I know. You know, it, it's interesting, isn't it? Because some people went into themselves. At, you know when covid came lockdowns happened and you know it, it's difficult isn't it when you're in that environment where you are you know it's almost you're constantly there with that thought were you still working as well during covid did you go back to work albeit you were remote and virtual yes yeah we were still working so when i obviously um so i had a bit of a phased return to work which was perfect because we got occupational health which kind of guides my manager with that um so i started working i think half days and then i slowly, slowly started working full time but yeah i just went back to working because we can work remotely Brilliant. Well, and, and you had a bit of purpose again, I guess that was the sort of... Yes, and it is true. Like I said, you know what the thing was, it was having purpose and also having my manager believe in me. He didn't just say, you were just a problem on the team. Like, you're just causing us more stress. You're just giving us more work. It was just like, you know what, you... you it, he treats it as a physical injury. This is what he led through the journey when he went through with me. He goes, it's like, if you had a broken leg, I'm not going to expect you to drive to work every day. He goes, and it's not, it wasn't like he was saying I was broken, but it's just like, you've got something that's not quite right and you need to recover before you can come back to work and that's how he saw it he's like you just need to recover just is just see it as that and until you're ready to come back he goes it's the same thing as i wouldn't make you rush back to work if you had a broken leg so yeah no like i said i'm very very thankful for people who are very very understanding and supportive of me because i generally don't think i would have got through it without them no and it, you know and i think that's so true and i think that's such a valuable point for everybody listening as well is you know support is really important you know you it, trying to do it on your own it's so difficult it really yeah. you know we get consumed by so many different things we try to 
fix everything ourselves without the support around us. And, you know, what I love is that you've you've used resources as well. So it's not that you've just gone, I need fixing, somebody fix it for me, but you've taken yeah. steps and you've used those resources, which obviously, you know, we talk about workplace wellbeing, mental health and everything else in the workplace. And there's a lot of resources out there, the employee assistance program, therapy and, you know, Oc health and everybody else. But people don't really always know what to do with them or when to use them or how to use them. So I have to say, I'm I'm quite confident that, you know, you've got a good manager if he's telling you about these programs that actually, you know, help. That's what it's about, isn't it? So so really useful sort of insights from from your perspective. There was a four week window when you were signed off sick. Mm-hmm. You said it was difficult. It was because you weren't working. Yeah. What was going on? What were you doing? How were you sort of? How would you- Honestly, I don't even remember. I remember one day I kind of just pulled out this um, photo um, book and just was looking through it. I literally, I was just doing random things. I just remember sitting there. Sometimes I was like, I sat there crying. Um, sometimes I was just like, okay, I need to do something. I was just trying to find things to do. But there's some days I literally just sat there and I was in my head. And you know what? I think it got to a point where I was like, I just can't, I can't live like this for the rest of my life there must be something that I can do to kind of get out of this and this is what people say no one can get you out of it you have to get yourself out of it and I think everyone reaches a point where you either make it or break it kind of thing I could have taken my life or I could have done something about it and I was just like and there was too many people telling me like you just can't you can't just think your life's over you can't take your own life you've got too much to give and hearing that I think daily was like okay if people are saying this to me there must be a reason they're saying this to me and that slowly slowly gave me the strength to kind of fight through it basically and I was just like okay I really do need to get my shit together um and pick myself up so I just like I said slowly slowly made myself do the gratitude even the days I didn't want to do it do the gratitude journal when I got bored I would just open that up and just write something down even if it just like I was talking to a diary even if I didn't want to say anything I was grateful I'd write about my day how it went or how it didn't go very well um but getting your thoughts down and like I said even if it's to your diary it's so important yeah yeah fascinating and I'm really you know I I think that's a great way of managing your way through those moments those darker dark you know and and that again comes back to support having things that you can use you know having awareness of you know writing things down actually does help it really does and you know talking about it helps writing it down helps being grateful for things practicing some of those so very very mindful things you know, and, and that's great. And that's what we want to make sure everybody has those sort of toolkits. Yeah. So, so let's talk about your movement since then. So obviously you're doing more around this subject, you know, driven by the fact that you're an amazing human who <laughs> experienced some things and, you know, wants to make sure others don't get into those places, or at least when they are there. Gets yeah. So talk yeah. about your thoughts and your plans and where you are and what's going on. Okay, so um, like I said, when I went through it, one of the first things I learned from it is like, how do I kind of raise awareness of this and make people think that this is kind of normal and they're not alone? Because that's what I would have wanted when I went through it. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't have that because maybe people didn't really understand mental health when they'd gone through it or they just didn't know what to do. So like I said, I just, I put things in place. We've done mental health awareness a week. We've done it. We've done it just before COVID um after I'd come out of one of my depressions I was like what can I do to kind of put in place for people to kind of talk about things make it a bit fun and also not make it so people have to do it but just just kind of get people involved so um we did this thing where we did like a baking chat and I sat and I shared my experience and people baked goods people came along um at the end of the activity or the end of the day we I did this activity where you write your name at the top um, and you pass the piece of paper around and someone has to write one kind word or a sentence about you. And at the end of the day, you, you sent them around the table, you got this piece of paper that you got back. And there's all these positive things to say. And people just kept it on their desk. And there's so many people said to me after that day, like, I still have that on my desk. And every time I have a low day, I just look at it. And it reminds me what I have to give. Yeah. Um, so like I said, it's just little things like that. We encourage people to go for walks because they say like 30 minutes of exercise or even 10 minutes of exercise just can boost your mood and just getting away from the screen and kind of switching off just can make you more productive like I said even in life not even just work like it just gets your brain being creative and just working better um and then we also encourage people to do a bit of meditation like I said there's a podcast on calm that I use um every day actually every morning 
um, we do, um, I do seven minutes of a meditation. It talks about a particular topic and then you do a meditation for a little while. Again, you just kind of switch off and you kind of just get into the zone. I did this on uh, this Monday, actually. So I got everyone in the office still together. Um, I brought some diffusers in, put some oils in, put the blinds down and got some yoga mats out. And um, like I said, so many people after it were like, oh my God, I can't believe that seven minutes changed my mood you know, everyone was like feeling lethargic it was monday morning everyone had a monday blues um some people had you know seen news in the morning which had upset them and they were like that actually really helped me like, it's not you know it's not a magic wand and you know it makes all your worries go away but it's that little step that makes your day a little bit better so yeah those are the little little things we're doing a bit of yoga we did a bit of yoga today actually as well which i learned that was quite funny and it was it, you know what it's nice to get people together people laughing people you know just having a good time it's a social thing as well as well as doing things for mindful stuff because again being with people having that support having people to talk to it just yeah it just boosts your mood yeah well yeah and that's what it's about right it's boosting yeah. your mood it's recognizing you know and you absolutely nailed it by saying you know monday morning people are feeling a bit low they watch the news and you know please anybody that's listening don't watch the news you yeah know, <laughs> they really do because it's not helpful um yeah. but you know it's those but what you're doing what i love is is the thought that says you know you can show people different things small things seven minutes listening to yeah. something and how somebody reacts at the end of that shows quite clearly the impact it has. And that's important. That's yeah. what we need to do more of. And I think that's where societally we struggle a little bit because we're so fixated on our routines. And I know yeah. people do need routines, you know, it's a big part of sort of our daily management, but actually sometimes breaking a little bit away from some of those normal routines to try other things, you know, maybe you, you replace them and put them into your routines, you know, which I know you said, you know, you do those yourself. And yeah. but that's where sometimes we struggle because we're like, I don't really have time to do that. I don't really have the position or the place to do that. I don't know. It's really hard, but actually I think what you're doing from the sounds of it is you're encouraging people to try stuff. And if they like so it, it doesn't take as long as you think. Like some people think meditation takes, you have to sit there for half an hour, an hour. You really don't literally seven minutes will make a difference or 10 minutes of yoga, like just to help your posture, your back. Because Wait. We waste so much time, right? We waste so much time. Yeah, thinking exactly. Time. You're probably and, procrastinating half of the day anyway. So you just use ten, seven to 10 minutes to do something that actually benefits you. I always, I always remember my business studies teacher. I don't know if this even makes any sense. My business studies teacher used to say, standing next to the printer doesn't make it go faster. <laughs> you know what? He's so true. I'm just like waiting for the it place. But if it goes wrong, I need to be able to fix it. So I yeah, guess exactly. Like, no it's fascinating honestly so much we can talk about we are coming right towards the end of this believe it or not this is just i can't like, believe that went so fast it's scary isn't it so yeah. time flies when you're having fun that's what they say right but it's been yeah. incredible it's been amazing honestly um but i like to just sort of give you the final thoughts if you've got anything you want to share with people that are listening about you know any thoughts insights you want any wonderful quotes you might have that you want to share that sort of sort of affirm your life and where you feel about things I'll throw it over to you, but just want to say first a big thank you. Thank you so much for for joining me on this. I've, I've absolutely loved every minute of it. So throw it over to you. Any final thoughts? Oh no, thank you for inviting me onto this. Like I said, it's an incredible opportunity to be able to share a story and you know my claim to fame. This might be my claim to fame. So yeah, this is brilliant. Um, my final thoughts. I wish you told me about a quote because I probably would have brought a quote with me because I actually did this thing in the office um, on Tuesday where. I got balloons, filled them up with helium and got printed up loads of quotes and um, cut them out and stuck them to the bottom of the balloons and literally had them floating around the office. I wish I'd remembered one of those quotes now. Um, a quote I can't, I can't think of off the top of my head, but I might send it to you so you can add it onto something. But um, yeah, like I said, key takeaways is always have hope and just know there's always light at the end of the tunnel. Things like this are temporary. They will go away and things do always get better. Um, always make sure you have a support system. Never try and go through it alone because... If anyone has done it alone, hats off to you. I don't think I ever could have. And I know a lot of people do require support to get through it. And like I said, always be grateful. Or honestly, you have no idea about the power of gratitude. It gets you so far. It's such a small thing that you don't, you don't even have to say it out loud or write it down. You, just, you can just say it in your head and just think of good things that are happening in your life and try and focus on those because trust me, it will pick you up and get you through your day in a better way. So there's the challenge practice the gratitude three things three things every morning even if people start off with that like i said that's something i took away from someone who's like my second mum, and i've i've taken that with me and always cherish that so it's brilliant call it the glad game there you go 
There you go. Amazing. Well, my second piece of gratitude is to say thank you again um, <laughs> to do. So I'll just uh, make sure I cover that one off in the morning. Um, brilliant stuff. Listen, thank you so much. Really do appreciate your insights, your perspective. It's a fascinating story and, and really do, you know, you look after yourself as well. Thank you. Um, and I'm See so you again soon. I'm looking forward to working with you. So yes. Me too. I'm so looking forward to that. Um, for anybody that is listening still, if you are struggling, if you do need extra help and support, please do know there are always people out there that do genuinely care. They do want to help. They do want to support you. Um, Priya, would you be okay if people reached out if they wanted to ask you any questions? Yeah, no, I'm more than happy. I'm more than happy to support anyone. I'll drop your connections and things into the uh, text or the description to this uh, episode as well. Um, but of course, there are organisations out there that exist today to help people who are struggling with anything in life. And it doesn't have to be that you're struggling, you know, with severe mental illness. You could just be struggling with, oh gosh, anything that that's worrying you. So please reach out. Samaritans, of course, exist uh, to provide a safe space to talk. Uh, telephone number is 116123. Um, you could also text to shout 85258. They tend to be the sort of the two biggest ones that support people sort of in case of emergency in the sense of if you need somewhere to talk to you very quickly or urgently feel free to reach out but please know you are not alone you are with others and there are many people around you albeit you may feel isolated and lonely at times but please reach out if you're struggling because that's what this is all about it's helping people to connect to conversations amazing humans talking about their journeys with mental health Priya again thank you very much I look forward to seeing you soon take care you too take care